talk to me about Dobbs, Jason. How? Do, I mean, it was immaturity, regret it. Have you talked to him? I have not. No, uh, none of us have. Um, I don't know if he was uh, being a hermit during his uh, two days that he chose not to come to work, but. You know, again, I don't know where this will end up in terms of like what his this does to his future. Like Tausch and I were talking about this. Like, if you're the Packers, how do you not let this influence your thinking on any thoughts you might have about an extension? Right? Like the, I just I've done this for so long, and I don't remember. Like, there's been. Certainly there have been things that have been done by players that were uh, conduct detrimental to the team. But, like, even with Jair last year, which I think was the first conduct detrimental suspension that I've actually had during my time covering the Packers, like, yeah, he did something selfish, yeah, he did something knuckleheaded, but it's not like he didn't just show up for work. And, you know, guys have overslept, guys have done this and that, but I don't think there's been a time where a guy just didn't show up for work and then the team sent a member of their security detail to his house to make sure I don't mean to be blunt but like to make sure he's not dead like that's how rare this kind of behavior is and so uh, I don't you know LaFleur said they had a good conversation and and whatever else but the bottom line is is you know it makes you wonder about this guy's decision making, whether he truly is that all for one, one for all type guy that he claimed to be, like all these receivers have claimed to be about all the, you know, no no clear number one, et cetera, et cetera talk. And what is what is he gonna do the next time he faces adversity? Which again, I didn't think he was facing that much adversity. I mean, yeah, he hadn't gotten as many targets as he'd like, but you know, you don't think Greg Jennings was unhappy with his targets at some point? You know, like Donald Driver during that 2012 season when they brought him back, even though they really just brought him back to save the PR hit of cutting the Dancing with the Stars champion? Like, those guys, they, they all have egos, but I don't remember any of them ever doing this. I mean, the closest I can think of was when they had the big snowstorm up here and they were picking up all the players so they didn't have to drive through it. And Jermichael Finley wasn't at home because he was in some co-ed's dorm room at UW-Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, he's a moron. <laughs> your guy. <laughs> that is your guy, Chew. He is a moron. So how do the Packers go forward, though, Jason? Because I, I feel like LaFleur's in a tough spot because you – Obviously, Dobbs wants more targets, but you can't necessarily reward him for acting out and devise a game plan where he's heavily involved, but he's going to be back, so you can't just not have him involved, but you don't want to send the message of, oh, yeah, just pout, and now you get your way, and here come 10 plays right away at the beginning of the game for you. Like, how is the? And I know he didn't really want to talk about it yesterday, but how does LaFleur handle this going forward? Yeah, and, and look, I don't want to... I don't want to brag, but I I did think that I stumbled upon the angle to get him to talk about it. And I thought if you listen to his, I think he answers two questions from from me first, or uh, and then I I brought up the fact that just a couple of weeks ago we had been talking about how many guys they were playing and the upside of that of getting guys involved and guys that aren't starters feeling like hey. You know, I have something to work for and look forward to on game day. I'm not just going to play on special teams. Like, you know, the the Evan Williamses, the rotation they were doing at corner, the number of defensive linemen that were coming in and out of the lineup, the wide receiver situation. Like, they're – I mean, you could ask Chewy, like, back in his day, you know, yeah, there were some personnel grouping changes and different guys would get in, but it it wasn't like Terry Mickens was playing – 10 offensive snaps. Like, he was the fourth receiver. He didn't get to play on offense very often. And so when I look at what LeFleur was doing, I loved it. Like, I think I prefaced the question by saying, look, I know this isn't middle school basketball, but you guys are managing to get a lot of different players involved. What's the value in that? 
little did I know that like literally two weeks later, one guy would feel like it was detrimental to his own targets and his contract push and everything else. So what I would argue is given where Dobbs was in terms of targets and snaps, I don't think love, I don't think LaFleur's going to change anything because hmm. That's the problem with this, right? Like, that's why we're all so mystified by it. It's not like he had played in four games, all with Jordan Love, and he had, like, eight targets on the season. Like, he played more going into L.A. before he was suspended. He played more offensive snaps than any wide receiver on the roster. His 20 targets were only two fewer than the two guys that were tied at the top of the target chart. And I don't know if you guys saw Bill Huber, who obviously has been, he has absolutely owned this story. I don't know who his sources were, but that that you have not seen one single solitary word from the Packers pushing back on anything he said or reported. And in his most recent story, he had pointed out that, so Dobbs came to work on Wednesday, Mm -hmm. even though he was unhappy uh, with his targets after the Minnesota game. And then he saw the game plan on Thursday, or saw the game plan on Wednesday, went through practice, and decided that the game plan did not have enough focus on him. And so that's why he skipped Thursday and Friday. So your, your point is a very good one. How do you go about having enough in his, in your game plan for him that he feels like uh, he's going to be involved? But it's not like he wasn't. I mean, the dude had eight targets in the game against Minnesota. Like, and and he would have had his first touchdown if he would have caught that ball at the goal line cleanly instead of bobbling it and then falling across the goal line and into the, you know, regular field of play. So I I don't know what you do if you're LaFleur because I'm sure when this happened, don't you think LaFleur was like, he's what? (laughs) Yeah, I think he was like the rest of us, Jason. J- Jason, in your two plus years of covering him, did you see this character flaw, or no? Did you think so? He- so yeah, so that's a really good question. So and and look, I've I've said this uh, a bunch of times. I want to make sure I say it every time I talk about him. I don't know what else could be going on with him. Like if there's some sort of, and I do not say this lightly or flippantly, if there's some sort of mental health aspect to this, I do not want to trash the guy not knowing anything about it, but no one has said to me that that's a factor here. But Tausch gives me a hard time because I said he's probably the most even-keeled guy I've ever covered. And that was based on, like, his his tone doesn't change in conversations. He doesn't get seem to get excited about much of anything. He doesn't seem to get angry about much of anything. And I don't want to make this sound like, yeah, he was a quiet guy, kept pretty much to himself. Never would have thought he would do something like this. But that's kind of how it was. Like, you know, he, look, I, he is different. I don't want to say weird. I don't want to say strange. He is, he, is a, he is a different guy. And, you know, Billy Schrader, I didn't like him. He didn't like me. Mm-hmm. There was obviously there, we had some disagreements what's kicked me out of a group interview, but like, Hey, even if you're kind of a jerk, at least there's some sort of juice there. Right. And, and he was just like flatline in every conversation. And it's not just me. It's everybody. Like he, he just, and I, it just makes me wonder if the old saying about still waters running deep. And then suddenly there's this kind of eruption doesn't hold true with him. 